Hello guys and welcome back to Unity Dev Tutorials. This is Sohil Sharma and today in this video we are going to make a character walk forward, left, right. So let's get started. First of all, I would like to inform you that in the previous video we have made the character move, move forward. So in this video I'll be telling you how to create an animator controller for this so that we can get everything very detailed up. So let's get started. So first of all, uh, we will have to create a new animator controller. So right click on your project panel, create an animator controller. And this time I will name this as move. I have already created this animator controller, but I have created it so that you will get a clear view of how to make this animator controller and which all animation clips we have to add so let's get it done very quickly so we have moved animator controller first thing that we will require right now is is idle animation so let's get it from unity st standard assets if you haven't imported unity standard assets you can import it from assets import package and character you will get all the animations and what all things required to move a character in that if you don't have this option you can go on Unity site and get it downloaded so I will find Unite Unite Idle this is my simple Unite Idle animation clip I will drag it and drop it here then what I want is simple box script at Unite so Unite walk so I'll get this one drag it and drop it in and then I want humanoid run so that if I press shift key and walk it should run so humanoid run simple run and information clip will require there you go So you can see that I have imported my yeah. So you can see that I have imported all my three clips over here. These are from standard assets. So let's make a transition for this. Now this orange color shows that this is our default clip. Whenever we hit play, this default clip will be played. So if you don't want to make this as a default clip, you can go and click here and make a whichever clip as a default clip, you can select it from here. Now we'll have to make a transition from here from idle animation to walk animation and from walk animation to idle animation. There you go. Also, we want the character to run, so we want walk to run animation clip and Run to walk animation to let's just arrange it properly so that it looks very nice. Now what we will be doing is we'll be setting up the parameters for this. So let's set the parameters. You go on this plus sign and create a float parameter to name it as walk. This will be a float parameter. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be applying this over here so for walk go and add conditions walk and we want it to be greater than 0 0.1 if you have not watched my previous video then you go and watch it you will get how to deal with these parameters I have explained it there I am not going to do that again and from Humanoid walk to humanoid idle will require as we are changing the parameter like we want walk when it is greater than 0 0.1 and now we'll be taking it back from walk to idle when it is less than 0 0.1 so walk less than 0 0.1 anyway now from walk to run so We will require another parameter for this. So 
So four click plus sign, make it float, and let's uh, let's casually name it as uh, spread. Yeah, yeah, make it as spread. And this is also a float parameter. And now it is setting up these values here. Yeah, so let's do that. We don't want walk here. We want it spread. And this print is greater than 0.1. So whenever the value changes, the unit start running instead of walking. And while returning, we want both because we want run also to be played. And the same time, we want spin to be negative. Like if it's it should be less than 0.1. So just add two conditions over here. First of all, we'll be adding sprint, and which is less than 0 0.1. 0 0.1, and walk which is greater than 0 0.1. Yeah. So this is how we'll be able to set the parameters. So we also want turn to take place, right? If I click uh, W and D. When I press W and D key on my keyboard, that player should start turn and start walking. So let's make a parameter and then we'll apply it. So do we ever make it turn? Turn. There you go. Turn parameter is also float. So you must remember that these parameters are float. Yeah. Now what we have only three clips running over here, like we will need idle, we will need walk, and we will need run. So what we require now is we require a blend tree which will handle all that turn animation when I click WD and again turn walk animation when I click AW. Keys on my keyboard. So let's create a blend tree for this. You right click on this humanoid walk and create a blend tree. So you can see that here a blend tree is created and you double click on this animation you will be taken back to the blend tree here. So now what we are doing right now is we have to add motions. So let's add motion, add motion field, let's make three motion fields. And one more motion field there. Yeah. So there you go. We have three motion fields, and which is shown on our blank tree. So now, what which motion we want? First of all, we want right walk. So we'll take it from here. Humanoid walk. Right. Then we want humanoid walk simple. Right, walk, and then gain humanoid, right? Wait, uh, walk right. Yeah. Why I haven't taken humanoid walk left? Because it's already turning in right direction. So if we take it left, it will move around some weird way. So I've taken humanoid walk right. And now we'll have to set the pressure. There you go. And this should be Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. I will have to take this one. Right? And we have to check for uh, for turn animations, right? So we have to set this one and console values to hold on. But this two, this is one, uh, and this should be should be somewhere around middle. It's not taking, right? Because it's not taking this entry. I'll just check it out. Yeah. This is the current animation we have applied. 
and yeah, the more red, just click on it and bring this to it. This is our blend tree, and we are going to check this value. It is not like let me just check it out. I will have to uh, just check this out a bit now. Uh, I'll just check it out. Don't auto threshold it. Uh, we will just do that with ourselves. So this was a problem which I was not getting. And uh, make this as zero. Yeah. So your animation for blend tree is done, I guess. Let me just cross check it and by it or divide or something. Uh, so parameter is done, which is absolutely correct. Plenty threshold, everything is correct. Yeah. Everything is correct. Now what we have to do is we will have to apply this animation to Sorry, this animator. This is already applied. I no no no. This is not the one. Sorry. Uh, we are uh, make this this one move. So now this move is applied to our character. And in the previous video, I have attached this box clip. So just remove this box clip. Remove this. Now we will be creating a new script. Yeah, we will be creating a new script. Uh, wait, I'll just take a previous script and just edit it there only. So, double click on that. Go to develops, take time, be patient. Let me minimize it for a while and I will show you something which is very interesting now. Uh, yeah, we in the blend tree here. Now when you change the values from 1, like if I change my values here, you can see that the character is moving. Okay. So you can see that the character is moving whenever the value is getting changed. So this shows that your blend tree is correct or not if it is not moving in the desired way then your blend tree is not correct or your parameters and your values are not set properly so please do set it okay so what are we going to do we were script scripting a C sharp script here okay type yeah so this is my previous script which we have made to just move that character in a proper direction so now what we will be doing is we will be making this character to move in, forward and turn. So few things we have to comment it out and few things we have to declare. So this is private word. So we will have to declare. This is for vertical right. So we will be doing for horizontal as well because it is moving in horizontal direction. So private hr whatever you can take it's up to all of you. Horizontal and private float spring yeah, spring. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, private is not correct. This is our animation component which is taking our animation and throwing it. We will just have to comment this out. If you are wondering where this script came from, please watch my previous video in which I have made this script to move character in forward direction. Or you can directly copy paste this which I am writing right now and apply to our animator controller which we have just made. 
Now we have declared it for vertical. We'll also have to declare it for horizontal. So let's do that. Dot get axis. So it gets axis horizontal. Let's do that very quickly. Okay. We also want the spending function to work. So let's declare this. Okay. We still require to define this function. We'll define it later. And now we'll be taking this update. Update. So in fixed update we have three animation which we have to call with the help of the parameters. So don't get confused in animation and their parameters. These are the parameters and these are the animations. So we have set parameters along with the animations. So don't get confused in that. Let's go to our script. Then we have an in. And it is a float value. So set float. And what are we calling? We are calling walk parameter. Which is vertical. Okay. Then we are calling horizontal parameters. And what are we calling in horizontal? Turn. It will turn in horizontal direction. So we are calling turn, which is horizontal. And then we are calling sprinting. Sprinting is a running. So we have named it as sprinting. So with the help of shift and forward key, it will start running. And if you left this key, it will stop. And animation will play, which is idle. So, and then set float, which is also a float value. Printing is also a float value. So, it is print, comma, print. Now in fixed update we have called our three animations. Now we are about to define this printing function. So let's define it. Sprinting function is easy to define because we are changing the values of this printing function from 0 0.2 to 0 0.0 if the button is pressed. So Calling fire button fire one. Let's swing it up a bit. So if fire one button is pressed, what it should do is should stop. It should sprint. And its value will be zero point two f. Oops, 
if this button is not pressed, then what it should do? It should it should set its value? Take this step. So you see that we have defined animator here and as an anim and we have also defined private code values of vertical and horizontal direction movement and also we have defined sprint values which are moving of this character to other directions. So let's just do that and quickly attach this tip to our character. John is our character and we are going to drag and drop our C sharp step on that character. And let's hit play and check it out. It is moving and it is also rotating, you can see that here. So, let me drag this main camera into the character so that you can see this view. Yeah, now let's play. Now, whenever I am pressing my W key, this character starts moving. And when I left my W key, it will start the idle animation. Is not playing the animation. So, let me check this one. Yeah. Let me maximize it. Yeah. I have pressed W key and it start moving in the forward direction. Now I will press D and it started turning A and it started turning in another direction. So this is how you can make a simple walk animation with the help of C sharp shift. So now in this video what we have learned is we have learned how to move the character in forward, make it turn right, left, and be the ideal animation. So, if you find this video very interesting and if you want any of your friends to learn Unity 3D development, please recommend this video to them. Thank you.